Ela, do you want to kick it off? Yeah. Um, hey, Coach, how you doing there, Dave? Yeah. How you doing, Dela? Pretty good. Pretty good. Hey, um, uh, how did the defense try to bounce back after a showing like that, specifically the secondary? Coach Dean said it was mental errors and uh, getting back to techniques and fundamentals on, on that side of the ball. I think you kind of just answered your own question, D-Led. It's, it's the NFL. Week to week, there's going to be issues that come up. Um, there are going to be challenges every week. you got to fix what uh, the mistakes from the previous week. It's pretty simple. Uh, easier said, obviously, than done. That's what we're going to do, just like we did after Tampa, just like we've tried to do whether we've, we've won or lost the game. And uh, New England's core is a different. It looks like he's got the tight ends, got your guy, Janu. And uh, got uh, you know the uh, Jacoby kid from here, Myers and uh, uh, Bourne looks like they're playing well for him. How's that group uh, look to you? You? Uh, they're they're really efficient on offense, playing well. They played well the last couple of weeks. They're a good team. There's a reason they they've won a lot of games over the years, no matter who's been out there. Um, so we know it's going to be it's going to be a challenge, just like it is every every week in the NFL. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Josh Kendall. Arthur, Dean talked yesterday also about the way Bill and Ivan Fears coach the run game to emphasize finishing runs, even maybe if it's at the expense of trying for the 30-yard gain. Is that something that you've noticed and maybe tried to emulate in the way you coach the run game? Yeah, I mean, it really just goes goes back to this. It's They're just really, they're really good. good. Uh, sorry, sorry, Josh. Josh. That's all right. Over here clicking buttons. Um, I knew it was Basti's fault. <laughs> he did. I just sent, I just I sent I about, that one. That one I can't throw him under the bus because he just definitely did it because I'm watching him do it. But uh, and also, Josh, they're just really good fundamentally. There's I, what I what I said the other day when I was talking, and, and it's the truth. Uh, they don't get enough credit how how physical these teams have been the last something twenty something years, and they they play really good fundamental football. I know that's not really exciting to write about. Uh, people get it gets mundane to talk about, but I kind of call it. It's like brilliance in the basics, and that's what I see when I see them. It's a really solid football team, well coached, fundamental. And they do the same things that that have won in the '50s that win today. Adjacent to that question is a question about first downs, because Dean was saying, you know, that in that run game, they they want to make sure they get the first down, not necessarily hit the big play. So when you're scheming stuff up, when you're thinking calling stuff. Do you find yourself thinking, I need a big play here? Or do you find yourself thinking, I need 10 yards? I need to move the sticks. Does that question make sense? No, it does. And I think it depends on your plan, you know, and, and not to get too in-depth to schemes here, but certain defenses, you know, you know their philosophy and they may they may be more opportunities, um, you know, depending on what you what you call, well, you got a chance for, for an explosive. You know, you're trying to scheme up an explosive because of a certain look you get. There's other teams in this league that, that will sit there and they'll, they'll make you earn it the hard way and they'll see whether you go and if you and if you'll screw it up. And so it just depends the scheme you're playing on. It depends what the situation is in the game. It's obviously easier to call plays, Josh, when when you're constantly ahead of the, the sticks and you can earn first down, first down, or, or first down, or second down. It certainly makes it easier. When you get to the first, second, third, first, second, third, first, second, third, you know, and you end up with now you're getting in, you get in the red zone, it's play 10, play 11. And grind it out, and they make it kick a field goal. I mean, that's the stuff that can come back, and we've seen that happen. We've gotten down. It had certainly happened in Philly, and it really it happened the other day. I mean, you, you get two drives, you only come away with three points, and then you all of a sudden you're looking down, you're down multiple possessions, and and if you're not, if you can't overcome that, it could snowball on you, and, and that's kind of what happened. So um, this is a really good team, good scheme that we're going against, and we know we're going to have to earn it and play really well tomorrow night. Michael Rothstein. Did that answer your question, Josh? Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. Mike. Hey, Arthur. Uh, first, do you anticipate having Cordero tomorrow? Well, let's see. I mean, he's practiced all week. It's a short week. It's not like it's been um, any kind of junction voice style practice, but he's participated, and we'll make the best decision tomorrow. Uh, probably, probably pregame. Michael, we'll take that one all the way up. And I think I've asked a couple of times, but I'm just curious where you feel like Josh Rosen's Josh Rosen's progression is and what you've really seen out of his development over the last, you know, I guess eight, nine weeks since you've got him. 
Yeah, well, you know, he's done a good job of what we asked him to do. Um, you know, we'll throw him in there last week. You know, he'd certainly, you know, tell you he wish he had some plays back. And we didn't really ask him to <clears throat> do a whole hell of a lot. It wasn't like we put him in there and, and I empty the chamber, the stack grab. It was more just to play solid and understanding that we didn't have enough possessions left in the game and get some guys some experience and, and be smart. Uh, just because, you know, after what happened in his first few drives in the second half, mathematically the next impossible was where we were possession-wise. So, no, it wasn't like we sat there and put him in there and opened up the game plan. Really didn't ask me a whole lot, but he still, you know, and I think he, he would tell you this, I wish, like every game, he wish he had a couple plays back. But overall, everything we've asked him to do, Michael, he's been, he's been pretty sharp with. Thanks, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Tori McElhaney? Yeah, just one for me. I, there's been something that's kind of come up over the course of the last few days, and it's kind of the idea of winning versus certain coverages. And and I was just curious from your perspective when it comes to the teaching and the mechanic standpoint of winning against man coverage, kind of what goes into getting that separation in those moments? Well, a lot of it is, you know, it's how these guys train. I mean, that's ultimately the day. Most times on third down, to me, to be a really good uh, receiver in this league, whether you know you're a tight end, uh, running back, you know, goes and can be used in a pass game. When you play man coverage, you have the route craft. And so when you're going against guys that are really savvy and they've seen all the tricks, and that's usually you know when you're going against good teams and they got players that have had success for a long time, they play you man. You can see whether your you know your moves really work or not, and how you get into the routes, how you lean guys, how you you know we call them second level releases. There's a lot of, there's a lot of detail, but that's those are habits that are formed over a lot of training. And I think a lot of times when young guys get into the NFL, they may have just been faster than everybody, you know, and it's just, you know, now everything tightened, tightened down and the competition about who you're going against. And so the, it comes down to these fine details that you, you may not know unless you're watching over and over and training over and over again. So guys that figure it out quick, the ones that last and become really good receivers. Anthony. Coach, I've been looking back at the last game, specifically the block punt before halftime. I wanted to get your thoughts. What um, exactly happened on that play? Because I was trying to figure out if um, a guy just got loose or did a certain person miss his block. I appreciate the question. Uh, I, we've moved on. we got a game. we got to play tomorrow night. That's all that matters. If you, if you sit there and live in the past, you you, you know, this, this league will eat you alive. I told you it's hard, Anthony. We moved on. We got to get ready to play the New England Patriots. And I'm not going to get into schemes. We got to do a better. Clearly, we got to play better. We, I got to do a better job coaching better. But that's that's all I can give you there. I appreciate the question, though. Um, and of course, just going into this week, obviously against Bill Belichick, coach, you know everything about know what it is. Um, how important was it just to have a short week? Are you just ready to get back out on the field just to? you know, get out of there and play. We do, Anthony, with the circumstances. We know what we sign up for. Um, you know, you can complain about certain things. We won't do that here. You know, you may, people, you know, when it's all human nature, you may privately complain, but at the end of the day, we know what we signed up for. So, they tell us to go play on Thursday. It's our job to make sure we're ready to go play on Thursday. They tell us to go play on Saturday. That's what we'll do. Play on Sunday. Last year, we had to play on Tuesday, and it's our job as professionals to get ready to go. And that's how I feel. Go to Mike Reese. Hey, Arthur, nice to meet you. Um, hey, Mike. This, this question sort of comes from like the 35,000 feet altitude view. For for those that are going to be watching the Falcons national TV, maybe for the first time as you institute your program here, how would you describe sort of what what your vision is of, of what you want the Falcons to be, how you want the Falcons to play ball? Well, we certainly want to play. We want to play better than we played last week, but, uh, you know, overall big picture, we want to be a smart and efficient team. We want to be a physical brand. And so we, we're obviously a work in progress. Kind of look at it like a startup, Mike. Uh, we've had some good, we've had some bad, we've had some ugly, and we've had some decent moments. But, uh, you know, we just learned how to, how to win games and finish. I think we're four and two in one possession games. We've had three games that haven't been very good uh, towards the end. And that's the kind of, we're, we're, we've got a good mix of guys that were here, that are, that are playing well for us. We've got some young guys you'll see out there tomorrow night, and we've got some good quality veterans that, that are here, uh, you know, uh, for the first time. It's a good mix, kind of a three-tiered system there. And so as you're forming this program and trying to create a winning culture, I mean, a lot of the things that I'd imagine they, they valued up in New England, we value here. And, and that's how you win and sustain success for a long time with guys that are smart, that are dependable, 
I know those are things you hear a lot from coaches, but, uh, you know, that's things we're trying to implement and getting the right people, coaches, and players. Andrew Callahan. Hi, Arthur. Thanks for taking the time. It's good to speak with you as well. Um, I wanted to ask about the Patriots defense and by no means asking you to predict what happens tomorrow. But when you look over their last three games, their zone coverage rate has come significantly from when they were second in the league and man to man up until about week eight or so. When you look at that split, does that say anything to you? And, and why do you think that change might have happened? I think it's probably pretty practical, probably about who they're matched up to, what their plan was, the quarterbacks are playing. Receivers are playing. Um, like I said, I mean, for years when you watch New England, they do a, do a really nice job, and a lot of it is just goes back to pretty fundamental football. You know, it's it's illusion. They 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 tackle well. They they don't they don't do things mistakes and get manipulated. They play discipline. They make you earn things the hard way. And when they play man, uh, you know they 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 know where their help's at. They play the right leverage, and they know what their issues are. So. Where they just you don't see you don't see a lot of mental errors and what they're trying to do, and that's what you see and they they can play it. But at the end of the day, I mean you're playing, you know, maybe two forms of zone when you break it down and you're playing man coverage. It's not it's not that exotic, but they're really damn good at at the basics. That's what I see, and that's a really well coached football team. And then real quick, just on John Smith from your time with him at Tennessee, um, what stood out to you as a player? And he hasn't I don't think performed at the level he wants to so far yet, but what would tell you about his character and, and his playing style that might come next for him? Uh, really um, mentally tough player, person, one of the most persistent people I've ever been around. Uh, I've got a ton of respect for him. He's a good football player and strong. Um, I, you know, I can't say enough good things about Jono. He spent a lot of time. I felt like I had two rookie seasons with him. I had him as a rookie, and then we changed uh, schemes, and it felt like I had him as a rookie again, and I'd say that in a compliment. I used to joke to to my wife, I probably spent more time with Jono than I did with her in 2017 and 2018. Matt Bonner. And Matt, you're on mute. I'm trying, yeah, I'm trying to do it. There you go. There we go. You just muted yourself again. Muted again, Matt. <laughs> I think I hadn't done this about a hundred times. Arthur, for, for you, when you watch the Patriots on film going from the uh, beginning of the season to, to recent games, how much has their offense kind of evolved in terms of whether it's their, the rhythm that it's in or, or just what, they, what they've what they done over the course of the season? I think in any, any season, and obviously, you know, if you're getting a quarterback that's been in the same system for multiple years, you know, maybe there's a quicker, you know, acceleration you know, when the season goes or where they're at. But you see a team that, most of Bill Belichick teams, they, they continue to improve as the season go, goes on. Um, they're really efficient. They don't beat themselves. And, and it's really just practical football is what I see. And and they, they're obviously creative. they got good schemes. But they're just really well coached fundamentally. And it shows up week after week, and you see that improvement. And that's why they've been playing really well. And that's why they're a tough matchup for most people. And it's why they sustain success for a long period of time. And forgive me, a, forgive me a local one. Uh, Tajay Sharp went to college in, in New yeah. England. How's he, how's he been for you guys, and and has he kind of evolved as he's been with you guys? Yeah, I was a new Tajay from our days in Tennessee, and we drafted him out of UMass. And he's a smart player. He's a, he's a good route runner. I, you know, I knew him pretty well from our time together in Tennessee, and he's been pretty dependable and done a nice job in his role for us this, this year. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Rothstein. Hey, Arthur, just want to jump back to what I was at to a little bit more Josh Rosen stuff because, you know, I'm sure you're thrilled about that. But when Ask whatever, yeah, when, when he got here, he said that he said he has said now that he's maybe more comfortable than he's been at any point in his career and more at peace. Have you seen that from him just in how he prepares and maybe what he's learning from that and, and things he's even taking from you? Yeah, you see that. I mean, it's it's like I said, it's a tough business and you've had the journey Josh has had and you've been cut a bunch of times in a short amount of time. And can, like I said, we're all human. It's no different than guys that, you know, coaches that get, you know, they move around a bunch in a, in a short span of time. So I think stability sometimes can be good for people, you know, if they earn it and, and he has. And 
Um, we'll just see where it goes. But uh, I tell, I'd say this about Josh. You know, a lot of people they don't withstand what he has, and 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 I and I appreciate that about him. You know, he wants to be a really good player, uh, be a good teammate, and that's why we we've, we've enjoyed working with him. And we'll just see where it goes. Is there something when it comes to because there were so many narratives about him early in his career? Has, did he change maybe the way the initial things that you had heard about him? Did those go away pretty quick? And uh, you know, Michael, like a lot of things in life, there's a lot of BS narratives, and you know, people get one thing and they want to run with them. It's not the truth one way or the other. I think as people, you know, like at least if I look at myself, I'm constantly trying to improve as a person, as a coach, father, husband. Uh, same thing. Uh, another thing easier said than done. But uh, so I, I just go with my experience on him. Um, he's a pretty honest and open guy. I'm sure you got that when you talked to him the other day. And like I said, we're we're happy he's here right now. He's done a nice job. What we asked him to do. Appreciate it. Thanks, Arthur. Thank you, Josh Kendall. Arthur, this is a hypothetical. I know, and you guys talk about next man up and being able to withstand injuries because they're going to happen. If Cordero can't play, is it harder in his case because he's been so because he's so versatile for you because he does so many things? Does that make the next man up thing a little bit more difficult to enact? I just I look at it, Josh. Whatever comes our way, the circumstances. We're in the solution business. That's what they pay me to do. They pay me to coach and to try to problem solve, and that's what it, my job is every day. Uh, so I don't worry about things you, you can't control. If the, if your you know left guard plays, it's that's practice all week. Great, it goes down the first play of the game. You got to have a plan. You got to adapt. You know we're not going to make excuses here one way or the other. I just don't believe in that. And so, um, like I said. You know, who plays, it's all we got. I know this, it'll be 48 guys active. They'll kick the ball off at 820 tomorrow night, and we'll be ready to go, and we'll compete. Thanks, so. Thank you. Mark Reese. Uh, Arthur, Mac Jones, um, I'm curious how much work you did on him leading up to the draft. I know you, you, you were locked in with Matt for good reason at quarterback. Um, and what you've seen from Mac as you've studied the Patriots. I think just about everybody, Mike, uh, you know, whether they try to be evasive or not, I, I'd imagine if you're doing your job and you work in the National Football League, you should probably look at who's available. So, uh, you know, I always kind of laugh as, you know, I took a peek at him. Well, you, you ought to know one way or the other. Um, so that's just how I think about it. So any, any all these players we looked at, and I think anybody that's a professional probably did it, but tell you otherwise they're lying or lazy. So uh, Mac, you know, really good player at Alabama, really smart. Like I said, you're seeing the same things that made him successful at Alabama, and they're, you know, enhancing it there in New England. I think he's done a nice job for him. He's going to be a challenge tomorrow night. Uh, I don't see a guy's making a lot of mistakes. He's playing pretty good football for him. All right. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Thank you, y'all.